Talk about what is happening in these trials because you have patients in different parts of the world, from my understanding, uh, that are trying this, uh, trying the drug for vitiligo. The choice is when you start these trials worldwide is not to, to provide false hope. Again, there is no trial and error. So the way we went about it was very meticulous, very precise. You need to find the expert centers in the world. Mm -hmm. It would be maybe music to your ears, but one of the expert centers in the world is Detroit. Fortunately for me <laughs> and, and other, all the other patients that are here so as well. So the, the top academics in the fields are well localized in the world and, mm -hmm. and Henry Ford uh, hospital is, is one of the leading hospitals that um, has specialized in vitiligo. So what we started to do is we invited these centers in an active dialogue on the premise, the, the thought process that would lead to a trial. And we challenged them, said, do you believe that this drug alone could actually reverse the process of repigmentation or depigmentation in vitiligo? And, and we found a unanimous response amongst the academic centers and said, you know, we have seen some initial results for narrowband UVB and the combination could well work. And, and that was also our starting point. So we found each other at, at these tables. And selectively we went to these centers in the world that had a lot of experience in vitiligo. Also these centers in the world that had a darker population as in, in, in their patients. So we were looking for African Americans, Asians, Hispanics, because they have a larger reservoir of pigmentation naturally. So th that was the path of least resistance. And um, we have selected three sites in uh, the US and three sites in Europe. And um, as you know, the results, the preliminary results have come out and they are excellent. Talk about, can, can you talk about some of those results? Because I've seen some of the pictures and they're very, uh, to say the least, they're very uh, encouraging. I mean, it, it looks like it works. Um, and it's very exciting for a person who's sitting out there with this disease to know that something out there works. Um, talk about some of those findings. How far are we away from the end to where, and getting the drug to the general population? I know that's a preemptive statement. It goes way far, you know, way far into the future. You can't, you can't see into the future when it comes to drug trials. But um, how far are we away from giving it to me? <laughs> well, let's put it this way. It goes faster than we had anticipated. Nice. But they look good. I mean, what you're seeing, what can you share with us about how it's going? The objective in the first trial in vitiligo is to accelerate, speed up the process of repigmentation, mm -hmm. to diminish the amount of radiation of narrowband UVB that one is exposed to, because we all know that narrowband UVB is not good for skin. Mm -hmm. It leads to skin damage, it's called photo damage. And to achieve repigmentation on places such as the hands and the legs, which are almost therapy resistant to narrowband UVB. And on those three areas, um, it looks promising. <laughs> Meaning that these patients that we have seen uh, that received both the active drug and narrowband UVB, mm -hmm. as opposed to those that only receive narrowband UVB and no drug, mm -hmm. that these patients are repigmenting faster, deeper, means all over the body, and also on sites, anatomical sites, like the hands and the feet, which were unthinkable before in terms of repigmentation. And um, we have seen some of these patients, and the effect is astounding, but also very emotional for these patients. How long do the trials last? How many patients are involved, if you can give me a kind of a number? And then from the end of the trials, I assume you have to lobby different governments around the world to get the the drug approved for use. How far is that away? And let's just stick with where we're sitting right now in the United States. But how long is the trial? How, how far are we away from getting it 
Just people. many questions in one. <laughs> but um, the trials take six months from start to finish. And um, we see the first responses after a number of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what is called a pilot trial, a proof of concept. We need to establish that this drug actually has a positive effect in patients, as opposed to a negative effect. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the starting point in all trials with all new drugs is, is it safe? It's not, does it work? The first answer that we need to, to come up with is, is it safe in man at this dose, at the combination of and UVB? Mm -hmm. And thus far, it's been safe. Mm -hmm. The second uh, question we need to answer is, does it have a positive effect in these patients? Are we need providing false hope? Gauging from the patient's response and the physician's response, we are, um, we are halfway there. When you use the word lobbying governmental agencies, that, that's a very difficult one. It's, it's not so much lobbying. Mm -hmm. It is working with regulators in Europe and in the US. In the US, it's called the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. In Europe, the EMA. And we need to have a close dialogue and involve them in the trials such that they start to see the results, analyze the results with us, and let us go to the, the next stage. And there are literally three stages, mm -hmm. phase one, phase two, and phase three. And if you go through these phases successfully, you can apply to get the drug on market. And you're about two, three years away from that point. Two, three years.